Welcome to Subject Soup. In one of the most bizarre wildlife operations ever attempted, the U.S. carried out a bold Guam mouse drop, airlifting thousands of poisoned rodents over the jungle to battle an invasive predator. It sounds like a sci-fi plot, but what really happened stunned scientists, locals, and the world alike. In the annals of environmental warfare, few strategies are as bizarre and captivating as the U.S. military's decision to airdrop thousands of dead mice over the jungles of Guam. This wasn't a whimsical experiment or a stunt gone awry. It was a calculated, high-stakes mission to combat an ecological disaster that had plagued the tiny Pacific island for decades. In this documentary, we'll unravel the astonishing reasons behind this unconventional tactic, explore how these tiny rodents became unlikely heroes in a battle against an invasive predator, dissect the incredible logistics that made it possible, and reveal what happened afterward, along with how Guam's people and ecosystem responded. Prepare to be left speechless by a story where science, nature, and military ingenuity collide in the most unexpected way. Why the U.S. Military Dropped Mice Over Guam The tale begins with an uninvited guest, the brown tree snake. Native to Australia, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands, this stealthy reptile arrived on Guam shortly after World War II, likely stowing away on you. S. Military Cargo Ships with no natural predators on the island, the snake's population exploded, reaching an estimated 2 million by the early 21st century. In some areas, their density soared to 13,000 per square mile, a concentration surpassing even the Amazon rainforest. This wasn't just a nuisance, it was an ecological catastrophe. The brown tree snake decimated Guam's native wildlife, driving nine of the island's 12 forest bird species to extinction. The Saihek, the K.O.K.O., and other birds vanished from the wild, leaving the island's forests eerily silent. The snakes didn't stop at birds. They slithered into power lines, causing hundreds of outages, 80 per year at Anderson Air Force Base alone, costing millions in repairs and lost productivity. They bit residents, though their venom posed little threat to humans, and disrupted Guam's image as a tropical paradise, impacting tourism. By the 2010s, the U.S. government faced a pressing problem. The snakes weren't just a local headache, they posed a global risk. If they hitched rides on planes or ships leaving Anderson Air Force Base, they could invade other Pacific islands, like Hawaii, where they'd wreak similar havoc. A 2010 National Wildlife Research Center study estimated that a brown tree snake invasion in Hawaii could cost $593 million to $2.14 billion in annual economic damage. The stakes were sky-high, and traditional methods, traps, snake-sniffing dogs, and human hunters weren't enough to curb the population. Enter the U.S. military and an audacious plan, poison the snakes with their favorite meal. Brown tree snakes have two key weaknesses, they'll eat prey they didn't kill, unlike most snakes, and they're uniquely sensitive to acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol. Just 80 milligrams, about one-sixth of a standard pill, can kill a snake, while other animals, like pigs or dogs, would need to consume hundreds of times that amount to be harmed. The solution? Lace dead mice with acetaminophen and deliver them to the snake's treetop lairs. Thus, the idea of airdropping mice was born, a desperate, brilliant bid to save Guam's ecosystem and prevent a broader Pacific crisis. How these tiny rodents became part of a high-stakes environmental solution. The brown tree snake's reign of terror demanded a response as unconventional as the problem itself. Scientists at the U.S. Department of Agriculture's National Wildlife Research Center had been studying the snakes for years, perfecting a strategy that weaponized their appetites. Mice were the perfect bait, small, irresistible to the snakes, and easy to mass-produce. Neonatal mice, frozen at birth, were chosen for their size and uniformity, ensuring consistent dosing with acetaminophen. Each mouse was injected with a precise 80 mg dose, lethal to snakes but safe for Guam's ecosystem, where native predators like crows had already been wiped out by the snakes. This wasn't about eradication, Guam's snake population was too vast, but containment and control. The primary target was Anderson Air Force Base, a sprawling military hub surrounded by dense jungle. If snakes breached the base's perimeter and stowed away on departing aircraft, the snakes on a plane scenario feared by Hawaii officials could become reality. 
The airdrop strategy aimed to suppress snake numbers in key areas, protecting both Guam's biodiversity and the broader Pacific region. It was a high-stakes environmental solution where tiny, drugged rodents became the tip of the spear in a war against an invasive species. The plan drew support from multiple agencies, the Department of Defense, the Department of the Interior, and the U.S. Agriculture Department's Wildlife Services. It wasn't cheap, part of an $8 million program launched in 2013, but the cost paled in comparison to the potential economic and ecological fallout of inaction. Scientists had tested the concept for over a decade, refining it to minimize risks to non-target species and maximize impact. By 2013, they were ready to deploy their rodent army, turning a seemingly absurd idea into a serious scientific endeavor. The incredible logistics behind this mission. Executing the mice drop was a logistical marvel that blended military precision with ecological ingenuity. The operation centered on helicopters, low-flying machines capable of navigating Guam's rugged terrain. On December 1, 2013, the largest drop to date took place. 2,000 acetaminophen-laced mice rained down over Anderson Air Force Base's forested outskirts. But getting those mice into the snake's grasp required more than just a flyover. Each mouse was attached to a miniature parachute made of cardboard and green tissue paper. The design was simple yet ingenious. The cardboard, heavier than the tissue, formed an inverted horseshoe in midair, slowing the descent and snagging in the forest canopy where brown tree snakes hunted. Helicopters flew at low altitudes, releasing the mice on a timed sequence to ensure even distribution across targeted zones. Dan Weiss, the Agriculture Department's Assistant Supervisory Wildlife Biologist for Guam, described it as quite simple, but the coordination was anything but. Pilots, scientists, and ground crews worked in sync, timing each drop to avoid overlap and maximize coverage. Some mice carried tiny data-transmitting radios, allowing researchers to track their fate. Did they hang in the canopy, get eaten by snakes, or fall to the ground? This data was crucial for assessing the mission's success and refining future drops. The operation wasn't a one-off. It became a recurring tactic, with drops in 2016, 2018, and 2019 targeting specific habitat management units at Anderson. In October 2018, for instance, thousands of mice were airdropped over 136 acres, part of a fenced test site for invasive species control and forest restoration. The logistics evolved over time. By 2016, Wildlife Services introduced biodegradable streamer-like cartridges, enhancing delivery precision and reducing environmental impact. Each mission required thousands of mice, sourced from lab suppliers, processed with acetaminophen, and deployed with military efficiency. It was a bizarre ballet of science and strategy, executed under the tropical sun, a testament to human creativity in the face of nature's chaos. What happened afterward, and how Guam responded? So, did it work? The results were promising but not definitive. Snake populations near drop zones declined, with studies showing suppression in targeted areas like the 136-acre habitat unit at Anderson. Native birds, though still absent from the wild, gained a fighting chance as conservationists worked to reintroduce species like the Sihek and Kokeo. Power outages at the base decreased, hinting at fewer snakes tangling with infrastructure. Hawaii, meanwhile, remained snake-free, with no confirmed sightings since the early 2000s, a sign that containment efforts, including the mice drops, were holding the line. Yet the snakes persisted. Two million strong, they couldn't be wiped out by airdrops alone. The goal was never total eradication, but rather a manageable reduction, and in that, the strategy showed success. Researchers like Robert Goose Gosnell, Wildlife Services State Director on Guam, hailed the drops as a tool for landscape-level conservation, boosting efforts to heal Guam's forests by curbing the snake's dominance. Guam's response was mixed. The military touted its environmental stewardship, releasing videos and statements about protecting endangered species. Some locals, like Chamorro activists, saw irony in the military cleaning up a mess it likely started. After all, the snakes arrived on U.S. ships. Others welcomed any relief from the ecological and economic toll. John Salas, Joint Region Marianas Environmental Director, spoke of hope, 
reducing snake numbers could pave the way for native seed dispersers like the Sali and Fanihai to return, restoring the island's natural balance. The drops continued into the late 2010s, with plans for more as part of broader military projects, like the Marine Corps realignment. Critics worried about unintended consequences, could acetaminophen harm other wildlife, but with no native carnivores left on Guam, the risk was deemed low. For now, the mice drops remain a quirky, effective chapter in Guam's fight against the brown tree snake, leaving us speechless at the sheer audacity of it all. The U.S. airdropping mice over Guam is a story of desperation, innovation, and resilience. It's why the military took such an extreme step, how mice became ecological warriors, the logistics that defied belief, and the aftermath that keeps Guam and the world watching. This isn't just a tale of snakes and rodents. It's a reminder of humanity's complex dance with nature, where even the wildest ideas can find a purpose. Thanks for watching. Every story matters, from the everyday to the extraordinary. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for your next world discovery. It's completely free and means the world to me. What topic should we explore next? Drop it in the comments below. See you in the next one.